today is AMD's Ryzen 9000 launch day. AMD are launching the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 9600X and 9700X today. These are AMD's new AM5 processors. They do look the same as their 7000 series counterpart, but there are plenty of differences in them today. For some of you out there, new processors, new motherboards, new anything brings a lot of joy. For us, it's just another day at the office. But let me tell you all this. Although they look the same as the 7000 series, from what we've tested, there seems to be a lot of changes done by AMD for this round. Okay, before we actually dive into what these processes are all about, let me just give you all a summary of events that AMD has planned for this new 9000 series processes. So for media testing, AMD has asked us to test with the X670E boards. Okay, thank you to SROC and MSI for providing the motherboards that we needed to run this round of testings. SROC provided us with the X670E Taichi Carrara and MSI provided us with the X670E Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. So coming back to the summary of events, okay? The 9000 series launch, okay? The processors are coming out first. AMD has a special chipset made available for the 9000 series that will be coming out somewhere around September, if I may be right, okay? It is called the X870 and the B850 and the B840. It's quite a number of motherboard series coming out for it, okay? It's roughly the same where you've got PCI Gen 5 support, USB 4.0 support, okay, overclocking capacity capabilities and all that. And from the highest motherboard chipset and all the way to the lowest chipset, there would be short changes done in terms of performance and functionalities. You can see in the slide after this, okay, for the full list of features available for these upcoming new motherboards. But the best part about this is that although there are new chipsets coming out, okay, this doesn't mean that your B650 or your X670 or X670E is going to be redundant. AMD has pledged a five to seven year period of AM5 support and those motherboards would be also be supported. Good job on that AMD. Unlike some other brand. So as many of y'all were aware that these processors were bound to be launched somewhere in July, but there was a minor delay on AMD side. AMD have, has explained themselves as to why there was a delay and everything. My personal point of view is that let's not waste time and argue and complain about the delay. Okay, the processors are here already. Okay, and there's already been a lapse of at least two to three weeks since that delay. Okay, so let's just get on with it and. Let's look at how these processors perform. First and foremost, out of the box, these processors have a TDP rating of 65 watts. Uh, let me just put it out there. I think this has to stop already. TDP rating does not necessarily mean max power draw of the processor. TDP rating is just its thermal design power. To actually find out the max power draw of the processors, you would have to put it through a num certain number of rigorous tests and you derive that valuation from your software on your computers. So let's stop talking about TDP ratings for everything and let's just focus on the amount of power it draws and how this power affects its value. AMD has this thing called PPT. PPT is basically platform power tracking. This is something like how the PL1, PL2 power limiters are on the Intel processors. However, there's only one for this. And out of the box, both these processors have a PPT rating of 88. What this PPT rating actually means is that out of the box, the processors are actually power limited all the way up to 88 watts. When it's power limited to 88 watts, both these processors perform identical to its predecessors, the 
Ryzen 5 7600X and also the Ryzen 7 7700X. But the best part about this is that although it has the same performance levels of those processors, the power draw, the maximum socket power draw of these processors when limited to those circumstances is extremely low. It actually allows you to use an air cooler to keep these processors cold. For instance, the Ryzen 5 9600X with a power, power limiter at 88 watts, the highest temperature we recorded in our test was just 78 degrees Celsius, which is on the safe side and it's still forming. However, its performance is kind of squeezed, is limited. So knowing that there is so much potential for these processors, we decided that this is not the best use, the best scenario for usage of these processors. So what I went ahead and did is I actually rem lim removed the power limiters and I allowed these processors to operate as wild as it gets. So operating at wild, as wild as it gets, we managed to actually get an idea, a rough idea of how much power these processors can actually draw. The Ryzen 5 9600X okay, actually drew as much as about 132 to 137 watts of power when allowed to drive. Whereas the Ryzen 7 9700X drew as much as 170 watts in certain instances. Okay? But yes, all these numbers sound high and everything, but this is where I think AMD has actually edged its competitors and created sort of a, I think a lead in the processor segment is by allowing its TJ Maxx temperatures of 95 degrees Celsius. None of these processors when allowed to reach to exploit its potential actually reached its TJ, TJ Maxx, not even the 9700X when it was drawing 170 watts. It only hit 89 degrees Celsius if I recall correctly. Okay. And I'm certainly impressed. We've seen processors in the past, okay, a few months back, drawing 200 watts, 190 watts, and hitting 95, 97, 100. Every time I open my hardware info or hardware monitor software, I'm seeing red numbers, red numbers, red numbers. But this testing scenario that I had with these 9000 series processors, I'm actually happy that I didn't see any red numbers. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste much time, okay? I'm going to give you all the benchmark results and scores that we've actually compiled for the past two, three weeks. And here it is. So all those benchmark scores that you've seen in the previous slides, okay, we've ran them in a very controlled environment. As I've mentioned, the motherboard sponsors. Besides the motherboard sponsors, we'd also like to thank Cooler Master and Kingston. Cooler Master especially for providing us their new all-in-one liquid cooling solution. You can see up here, it's the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Ion. It's, just imagine the Cooler Master Atmos with an LED screen. It performs amazing for a 360 AIO. As for Kingston, Kingston shipped their amazing RAM kits the Kingston Fury Renegades, 6400 megahertz, 24 GB times two kits. They sent us two kits. Thank you for that. And this overall, the testing procedures was easy. Thanks to all of them. So as you all see on Cinebench R23, okay, we've actually tested the processors on Cinebench R23 and R24. Okay, R24 is more memory intensive, while R23 is more CPU intensive. Okay, so let's talk about R23 first. R23, the Ryzen 5 9600X and the Ryzen 7 9700X had a single core score of 2126 and 2182 respectively, whereas its multi-core test pro yielded 16,716 and 22,537 respectively. So what do these scores mean, you may ask? Some of you all may not know what it is all about, but basically, this course gives us 
rough idea of where do these processes rank in terms of this utilization. Okay. Single core utilization, basic, not basically, I mean, it revolves more around gaming, simple gaming tasks, whereas multi-core is sort of a hybrid workstation scenario. So looking at those cores, you can actually see that the Ryzen 5 9600X slots in terms of single core usage, okay, slots around the range of the i7-13700K and the i7-14700K. Bear in mind that those are Intel i7 processors. They are 14 cores, 12 cores, 16 cores processors. AMD with its 6 core 12 thread processor is actually taking the fight to these big guns. A 6 core processor coming out with scores like that on single core usage essentially means it's a really decent, it's a really good choice for a gaming PC. You do not need flagship specifications for a gaming PC. Okay? Even with the Ryzen 5 7600X, it is fair to say that it suffices and it puts up a good fight. If you look at its multi-core usage, okay, the Ryzen 5 7600X scored 16,716. This score puts it around the range of slightly higher than its predecessor and lower than the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. So looking at this scores, it is, we can actually deduce that this processor doesn't really thrive in a hybrid workstation environment. But the situation is different when you look at the Ryzen 7 9700X. The 9700X had a single core score of 2182 and a multi core score of 22,537. 2182 actually puts it higher than the 13700K, closer to the 14700K's range. The 14700K is a beast of a processor because it comes with 3 cores. I, I, I can't really remember how many P cores and E cores it has, okay? But as a basic idea of it, it's 20 cores. And take into account that this 9700X, okay? This 9700X, it's only an 8 core processor. AMD's 8-core processor is taking the fight all the way to Intel's beloved child. The i7-14700K versus 9700X, it's a no-brainer at this point already. Because take into account that when you have an Intel i7-14700K, number one, cooling solution. Number two, motherboard pricing. And the thing with motherboard pricing, yes, you can actually pair the 14700K with a B-series motherboard, but all in all, no, most people do not actually favor doing that because there are certain limitations with the B-series board when you pair it with a K-series processor. So overall, factoring, factoring the overall cost to actually set up the 14700K versus the overall cost of setting this up, it is fair to say that this comes in slightly cheaper than the Intel and it performs as close as possible to that i7. So when you look at cost value per performance, okay, it is fair to say that this is ahead of the Intel and its competitors. So I am actually impressed looking at all these costs. Okay. I've been an Intel fanboy. Okay. People in this country, in Malaysia, they know me as an Intel fanboy, but with Ryzen 9000, I would say that I wouldn't mind switching up the systems in our office to Ryzen 9000 series. I don't know about y'all, but let me know what y'all think. I don't know about y'all. But let me know what you all think in the comment section below. And if you're already using Ryzen, let me know if you all are willing to upgrade. Thank you and see you all in the next one. Hi guys, I'm back. Just a quick one. I forgot to actually pass you all a good piece of information about these processors. Okay, these processors will be available 
okay, at a retail price of 279 US dollars for the Ryzen 5 9600X and 359 US dollars for the Ryzen 7 9700X. So those are the pricings. Thank you once again.